A few weeks ago, we got this Hillsborough flatbed installed in our truck, and then last week, we made a video about the process. And then much to our surprise, we were overwhelmed with questions from Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube about the flatbed. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the top 10 most frequently asked questions about our new flatbed. Make sure you watch all the way until the end where I'll go over the actual invoice and tell you what we did with the original factory bed. For a little backstory, we travel full-time in our Cirrus 920 truck camper, which is currently off the truck while we mooch dock with a friend in Michigan. We have a 2018 Ram 3500 dually diesel crew cab with about 65,000 miles on it. So the first question is, what is the weight difference between the new and the old bed? And that was actually something I had a really hard time finding an answer to. So the 2000 series flatbed that we have on here is about 485 pounds, but that doesn't include the boxes. These are RC tool truck boxes, and I actually couldn't find the weights online. I would say they're probably somewhere between 20 and 60 pounds a piece. The one item I really couldn't find a specific answer on is what the original factory bed weighed. I saw everything from 150 pounds to 600 pounds. I think the actual weight is right around 500 pounds. So I'm gonna say that swapping from the factory bed to the aluminum bed is pretty much a wash weight-wise. But if you guys know what a Ram 3500 dually bed with a spray-in bed liner weighs, please let me know down in the comments. The next question is, does the new bed allow us to keep the factory hitch installed? And it does. Believe it or not, that was actually one of the deciding factors for us in choosing this bed model over some of the others. A lot of the other flatbeds out there come with their own integrated two and a half or three inch receiver hitches. The main reason I wanted to keep our factory hitch is because it's already a 20,000 pound hitch and it's gonna work well with the torque lift super hitch that I plan on getting. It also saved us quite a bit of money. To upgrade from the 2000 series flatbed to the 2500 series flatbed was gonna be roughly 1500 to $2,000 more. The next question was, does this flatbed interfere with our factory installed gooseneck or fifth wheel prep kit? So our Ram 3500 did come with a gooseneck or fifth wheel prep kit, which there's a big metal plate underneath here, which I'll try to climb under there and show you in a second. This bed does come with an integrated 30,000 pound gooseneck. The integrated gooseneck setup sits right on top of that factory installed option. It's close, but it looks like there's plenty of clearance for it to fit. The next question was, could I show the bottom and back of the flatbed? So let me do that right now. This is the bed. This is the headache rack. And then in the back here, you just have the headache rack bolts down. There's, let's see, one, two, three, four bolts on the bottom and then three on the sides, way over there. Same thing over here. I decided to line the bottom of the boxes with the leftover cedar. It's gonna protect the bottom, and then it's gonna give me a bunch of blocks if I ever need them. It's also very light and uh, rot resistant, so even if it gets wet in there, it shouldn't be terrible. I'll check it occasionally though. Love the boxes. The toolboxes mount right up against these beams. You can see it right in there. The side of the bed is about four and a quarter inches high. The rub rails are roughly two inches. These main I-beams are three inches high, and this beam is also three inches high. So that gives me six inches of total height to the deck. Well, actually no, because the deck is an inch. So from here, it's three inches up to here, three inches up to there, and then one more inch up to the top of the deck. So that's seven inches from this plate, whatever you call this bracket right here. So that steel strap is welded on and then bolted through. Same thing right there. In the back, they welded this rectangular tubing to the, the actual uh, hitch mount, which is this. So it's not welded to the frame, which is here. This is the factory hitch. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Hitch mount, I guess. It's this whole thing right here. So they welded to that, which I think is okay. I didn't really expect them to weld directly to it, but I'm not gonna complain. I really expected the whole thing to be bolted on, but I still realized that if I needed to take the bed off, all I need to do is take those three bolts out and it'll also come off, but it will come off with my hitch. This is the gooseneck mount right here. And then it's pretty hard to access underneath here. So that rectangular tubing, which is acting as a spacer, is also bolted to the body mount on the other side. 
If you look around, these are some of the sensors and light cables that they filled with, uh, this looks like silicone. There's another one there. These are all the lights. These are the sensors that they relocated from the factory bumper and put them up inside, right along the edges here. They also, in order to make it fit really tight, they notched this out. So you can see, looks like he just used a die grinder or a sawzall and just cut it out. So it fits in there really tight. I asked them to retain the double seven pin because I had one that was mounted in the bed and one on the back of the bumper. Got the lights, got our sensors. And on this side, it's pretty much all the same. The original fuel fill, they had to cut off about here. They added this flex tubing on and then they welded this in. So originally this ran all the way to here and they cut this out and they kind of weld in their own bracket. They explained that to me. I think we mentioned that in the previous video too. Cap right here, weld in the bracket. The def tank for my truck is actually under the driver's seat. So the tubing runs all the way back and used to run back to here, but they simply shortened it and mounted it here. When I was in visiting them, they, they asked me what I wanted to do with it and I thought that this was an ideal location for it. Or we can make a bracket, weld two tabs that'll actually hold your def. So this is the back side of the lights. There is a little drainage underneath because these are not extremely tight. So I'm sure water gets in there, but the lights themselves are sealed, so it should be fine. There's a couple other styles of headache rack that are more of like a fence. I like the openness of this because I can still reach through and wash the windows. And then looking down at its closest point, it's about an inch and a half away from the cab. So the next question is where are the overhang and tank drains on our camper? I don't have it mounted on the truck right now, but it's virtually identical to the previous bed. Our Cirrus always sat right about here on the old bed. And I think the new bed, if you look at it, there's a little bit of chafing right here. So it's about three quarters of an inch farther back. Pretty minimal. I would say it's, it's just about the same. So that means all of the clearances and everything that we had for the factory bed basically stayed the same. It was no problem at all. And keep in mind, that's with the bumpers of the camper touching the headache rack, which I found out is a bad idea because it's gonna leave chafe marks. Next time, I'm gonna load up with probably some, a piece of wood or something up here to protect it. Next question was, what is the exact length of the bed? Looks to be 98 and a quarter. Eight feet, two and a quarter inches. The width of the actual flatbed is 92 and a half, and the overall width is just about eight feet. The next question is, why do we choose a Hillsborough bed over another brand like CM? Well, I've been looking at flatbeds for a while now, and I've kind of narrowed it down to CM, Hillsborough, and EBY. I don't know if that's how you say it, maybe it's EBY. We actually had a friend of ours reach out to us saying that they had purchased this bed. They'd put a down payment on the bed, but then they ended up finding their dream truck that already had a flatbed on it. Since they'd already paid the deposit, they were afraid they might lose it. So what I ended up doing was purchasing the deal from the guy at a slight discount. So I saved a few hundred bucks on the bed, which was nice. And the deal was already set up through Grant County Truck Bodies. Since we were already heading to Michigan, we had no problem making a slight detour to Southwestern Wisconsin, especially since we found that they had a campground within walking distance of the shop. Other than the fact the deal was already set up, I could have easily switched that deposit to a different model of Hillsborough bed or to a CM bed. But when I started looking at all of the options, I really liked the fact that this did not have an integrated hitch on it, and it's about two inches lower than most of the other beds. This was also one of the more inexpensive beds, and the reviews indicated that there's really no quality issues with it. The big difference was that a lot of the other beds are tapered from here out, which gives it a, a sleeker appearance. You know, you can see this is fairly boxy. But considering we're hauling a truck camper that's already boxy, I don't really care. And it increases my options for boxes under here because I don't have to deal with the, the tapered part. It's the same thing in the back. I'm, I don't have any boxes, but if I wanted to put a box in here, since I don't have it beveled or tapered, whatever you want to call it here, it gives me some more options for square boxes that might fit in here. Granted, I'd probably have to move my exhaust pipe. The number one factor for me was trying to find a balance between price and quality. Followed second probably by the height of the bed, and this was one of the shortest flatbeds that we could find because that's definitely a downside to flatbeds as they add to your overall height unless you're building a custom setup. So we had a two inch 
cedar platform in the bed of our truck. And this flatbed adds six inches. So if you remove the two inches from the cedar platform and add the six inches to this, you end up with a four inch increase in height, which means that the gap, obviously it's not on, the gap over the truck is increased by four inches. It also means that your center of gravity goes up and your clearance goes down. So we used to be 11 feet six and now we're 11 feet 10. Next question is why do we choose Grant County truck bodies for the install? Well, I think the biggest reason is because it was already paid for there. So I couldn't pass up a good deal and it was pretty much what I wanted to do anyway along our path of travel. But of course, before I agreed to the deal, I made sure I researched them and they come highly recommended. If you look up the reviews for the company, they're actually pretty good. I really couldn't find any major black marks that would make them worse than anyone else. I also called them up and asked them about the process of moving from the original buyer and moving everything into my name, what I needed to get for authorization or whatever. They made the whole process very easy. They just called the guy and they agreed and done deal. So it was really easy. They were nice to work with. And of course, at the end of the whole process, we were very happy. They did a great job. Their customer service was on point. I went down there a couple times to talk to them and go over all the details. So I was very happy with the installation. I really have no complaints. The next question is, what do we do with the old bed? Well, unfortunately, my options on that were pretty limited and we just sold it to Grant County Truck Bodies. They do it on a regular basis and what they do is they buy the bed from you and then they wholesale it to another company. So if I brought a brand new truck down there, they would give me $800 for the bed. Since mine was used but in good condition, they gave me $400. Grant County Truck Bodies then sells those beds to a wholesaler and I would imagine that wholesaler probably refurbishes them and then sells them to people looking for them. I was looking for a better option on how to sell it but I really couldn't find anything. Now, if I had this to do over again, what I probably would have done is spent the month ahead of time trying to find a buyer for the bed. Because as soon as the bed was taken off, someone could have come and picked it up. But since we're on the road full time, I don't have a place to store it. I have no way to transport it. It was just kind of a, a big pain in the butt. So if you guys are considering getting a flatbed installed, I would definitely recommend finding a buyer for your old bed first. Grant County Truck Bodies wouldn't really care what I did with the bed, but it was much easier for me to just sell it to them and take the 400 bucks. Oh well, I guess you just live and learn. So finally, the number one question that I got about this is, what did it cost? For that, I'm gonna go inside and go through the entire invoice with you guys line by line. Here's the invoice, 9-9 of 2022, and let me fold it up and I'll go over the numbers. All right, so we have the Hillsboro Aluminum Flatbed Series 2000, and it's eight by eight and a half. Of course, that eight and a half also includes the distance that sits underneath the headache rack. That's $4,400, and that includes everything listed here, including the 30,000 pound gooseneck, ball plate, and cover. It has a fuel fill kit, wiring harness, and plug-in connections. So next we have the bed ram box off through 2018. I actually, I'm not even sure what that is. I believe that's the removal of the bed. Fuel filler cap, which is an additional thing, is 30 bucks. Uh, the fuel filler neck, which is an add-on, is 68. You get 800 for the installation, including the mud flaps and some of the other wiring. $615 for each of the truck boxes, which I thought was expensive until I priced them out, and that is exactly what they cost. So those are 30 by 18 by 18 diamond plate aluminum boxes. Uh, $95 for the box installation. $65 for the exhaust tip. Got a down payment on there. Trade the 2018 Ram box. That is the credit that I got for trading in my old bed. The mount the def filler, I assume that's $95 to install that. Install the camera and backup sensors. They did ask me if I wanted to keep those, and of course I did. So that was an additional $150. You get some grommets for the sensors, some relays, and seven-way plugs. So the grand total is $7,144.07. $372.44 of that is sales tax because I got it done in Wisconsin. Honestly, considering some of the states we've been to, 5.5% isn't too bad. Now, when I looked at some of the CM beds or even the Hillsboro 2500 series, this number up here is what would have gone up much higher. So the other beds were between two and $15,000 more. Flatbeds and service bodies can get pretty expensive and this was a reasonably priced flatbed for us. Those were definitely the top 10 most frequently asked questions that we received, and I hope that they're helpful. A big thank you to all you guys for asking questions because it made making this video much easier for me. If you do have additional questions, of course, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer them. If you guys found this content helpful or informative, please make sure you subscribe, click the like button, and click the little bell notification icon. It really helps us. 
Also, make sure you check out our merch. If you guys are interested in getting a t-shirt or a hat, it's right down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.